All right, so in this screencast, I'm going to be modeling a sort of propeller hub thing that's meant to be 3D printed. And it's going to be my first time doing it. Um, so that means that you're going to kind of get a, get to see an inside view at how I'm approaching the design. I'm probably going to make some mistakes, and I'm also going to show you how I diagnose and fix those mistakes. So the first thing to do is go over to this link that I give you. Um, and uh, under Custom Features, click this, and be sure that you have Aerofoil selected. This will let us make the airfoil with um, an aerodynamic shape so that we don't have to sketch it out ourselves, and it's going to save us a lot of time and energy. So now go back to your documents page, select create, make a new document, and give it a nice name. I'm just going to call mine propeller, like that. All right, so once we're in this document, I'm going to start out by modeling one of the propeller blades themselves. So in the Zoom meeting I had, um, I started out by modeling the hub first, but I think that it's going to be a bit cleaner if we start out with the blades themselves. So first what we're going to do is we're going to select one of the side planes. Personally, I prefer starting out with the right plane for anything that's kind of protruding. Um, it just kind of makes symmetry be a bit nicer, I don't know, just very much personal preference. So select the right plane, start a new sketch, and press N to orient normal to it. Normal to basically means facing something. So um, if you hear a normal for something or normal to or something like that, that just means basically like pointing out or facing it or something like that, basically a 90 degree angle in most cases. So N to go normal to, and I'm going to select the line tool and I'm going to click once in the bottom left quadrant and once in the right quadrant, top right quadrant to add the line. And then it's still making the line so we can press escape to deselect it. Now I'm going to select the line and the origin point over here. It might be a little bit tricky to select it. Zooming in can help. Oh, whoops, the line, then the center point. And then over under constraints, this might be a drop down. So like if you're working on a smaller display, it might be a drop down here. We need to select it. But the one that we're going to want to use is this one where it's aligned with the dot in the middle. It's called midpoint. If you're having trouble finding it, you can press Alt C and then type midpoint and it'll highlight where it is. And it'll also give you some information for how to use it. Basically, this is going to snap the middle of this line to always be on our origin point. So now let's define the angle for this. So you can press D to enter dimensioning. And now I'll click this line and I'll click this plane over here. So since we're facing directly at the plane, we can actually select the plane itself for the angle. So click the line, then click this here. And now you can move your mouse around for the different angles you might want to have. So we can have an obtuse angle over here, an acute angle over here, or we can have the whole the angle going all the way around over here. For our purposes, I think it's be, gonna be cleanest if we just go over here in the smallest angle, the acute angle, and type in something like 20 degrees. Now for the length of our propeller blade, I'm just going to go ahead and set it to something like, I don't know, like one inch maybe. Um, I'm going to keep this kind of like 3D printer scale and we'll probably change the scale later, but um, yeah, so that's good enough for now. And this will define how our wings facing. So now press the green check mark and what you're gonna to wanna to do next is open the Aerofoil custom feature. So if this doesn't show up for you, go over to this document, custom features, select it, and then go back over here and refresh the page to reload any add-ons. So one option is to go to this drop-down and then scroll up down until you find it, but it's really long if you have a lot of them. So I like just pressing Alt-C and then type the name of what I want. So I'm gonna need Aerofoil. For the cord line, we're going to select the line over here that we have, and now it's red, it says, we cannot resolve entities, so that means that we need something, we need to select something more. And we still don't have a profile plane, so I'm going to select the profile plane and the right plane. And there, perfect. Now we have our um, airfoil shape here, except I think it's backwards. So, um, and also since we want the wind to blow on it rather than the push, rather than this to turn around and kind of be a propeller, um, we might want to flip it around so that's kind of um, facing the other way like that. You can click these arrows to flip it until it looks right. So the thing is, I don't know anything about aerodynamics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it, flip the direction it's facing. So that's facing, um, that this is going to be kind of the angle that the arrow approaches from. We're gonna have it go in this direction and it's meant to like rotate counterclockwise. And I'm also gonna flip it upside down. So basically as the arrow pushes down on it, it's going to get redirected sideways. And um, yeah, for these values, I don't understand aerofoils at all. I'm just leaving them at the defaults for now. Um, yeah, so that's good enough. All right, I'm gonna accept that. And now we have our profile here that we're gonna extrude. So this over here, um, it currently comes out to this weird angular point. We can fix that later. So what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to use the extrude tool. So we can select extrude here. And since this is a flat face, we can select that directly. 
And now let's drag it out to get our rough size, and then we can lock that in with an actual dimension. So currently it's at about seven inches, so I'm just going to type seven here. And we also want to have it not go all the way to the center. We want it to be able to slot into our center propeller hub. So I'm going to add a second end position, flip around the direction, and drag it to be just a little bit away. So in this case, it looks like half of an inch will probably be good enough, but we can always change it later since this is parametric CAD. So half an inch here for the second end position, flipped around like that. And now I think we're all set to kind of do some more work. OK, so in order to get this face to behave, we can delete it, and then Onshape will extend the other faces to go out. So we can press Delete Face, select this back face, and with the Heal option, what it's going to do is it's going to take the other faces we have here, and it's going to mathematically continue them out so that it ends in this nice point over here. So you don't have to worry too much about how that works, but know that if you use the Delete Face tool, it'll kind of try to take the other faces and continue pushing them out until you kind of get, like, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like, once you use it a bit more, I think it becomes a bit more intuitive. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to make the actual hub for this. And since we want a round hub that's aerodynamic, uh, Revolve is usually a good option if you need something that's round. So I'm going to go onto the front plane, and I'm going to start a new sketch. Press N to orient normal to the sketch plane, and let's get on with it. All right, so in this case, I'm going to use something that's called a conic. A conic is sort of like an arc, except it's kind of um, it's like an extension of an arc where it's sort of like um, it has more flexibility than an arc. So what a conic is, um, to give the math background, it's like if you take a cone and you take a slice of that cone with a plane, it's the shape that you get out of it. So it sounds really fancy, but it's basically like a couple points and a point where they meet and then like how aggressively they meet at it. So I'm going to kind of show you because it's easier to show than to tell. So I'm going to click once over here. So make sure that it's snapping over here to be horizontal. I'll actually not click on there to show you how to fix that. And then also snapping up here. And then this is our third point over here. All right, so the row value is kind of like um, how angled our slice of the cone is. Basically, it's it's kind of more intuitive Like once you kind of play around with it. So if you have a value selected in Onshape that's a number, you can move your mouse over it and scroll it to see what happens with it. So if you move your mouse over it and scroll it, you'll kind of see what happens. I'm going to leave it at the default 0 0.5, which I believe is an ellipse. Um, we can always change this later. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to add some constraints. I pressed escape to get out of it. If you if you ever have your mouse doing something weird, you can just press escape until you get out of the tool that's causing the weirdness. All right, and if you ever have something selected that you don't want selected, you can click an empty space. Or if you're zoomed in a bunch and you don't want to navigate around to empty space, you can press space to deselect it. All right, so let's go back. So end to orient normal to the sketch plane, and I'm going to zoom out a bit. OK. So this point over here, we can drag it around, and we don't want that to happen. So to add that um, horizontal constraint, we can just drag it over until it's to the side of the origin, until it snaps into place, and we're all set. Now let's make sure that um, this focal point kind of um, is in a good position. So what we want to do um, is we want it to be kind of right above here, because what essentially what this does is if you draw a line from here to here, um, the conic is tangent at the very end there. So we don't need to worry about this too much. But since we want the propeller to, let's say, go down like over here a little bit further, we're going to want to make sure that it's tangent. So there's two ways of doing that. Also, I'm going to draw a line over to here just to kind of um, close this off for now. So you can press L and then click on points to um, make the lines. So one option is to click this point and this point and press um, V for vertical, and it'll snap it to be vertical. Another option is to press um, this line and this point, and then press I for coincidence so that that point is on the line. Or a third option is to click the conic first, then the line, and then press T to make them tangent. All three of these functionally do the same thing in slightly different ways. You can choose any one of those you want. I'm personally going with the click, click, and then T for tangent. All right, so now that we have this, let's add some dimensions. Um, press D to enter the dimension tool, click this plane over here, click the point up here, and I'm going to set this to be 2 inches. Now um, we want a dimension across the center, so we're going to add another line here. Um, these lines were added with the line tool, which is with L. I'm going to press L to enter the line tool, click the top point, and while I'm making the line I can press Q to switch to construction geometry, or I can do it after. So in any case I'm going to add a line here, press escape to get out of the line tool, Select this line, 
and then press this little dashed to solid thing, or you can press Q to toggle construction geometry. This will let us dimension kind of across the line and use it as a center line. So now we'll press D to add another dimension. Um, I think you can click this line here. So click this line here, then the center line, and then move your mouse over to the left side. So this will let you dimension a diameter instead of kind of a radius. So for this diameter, um, I think two might work, but if it doesn't, then we can change it later. I'm also going to click this line over here and set this to be, let's say just one inch for now. And we can still drag this around because it's blue. So let's drag it to figure out where it wants to move. Okay, so let's try to make our, um, let's try to make the front pointy. So I'm going to actually dimension this to be a little bit lower. If we were to put it so it's directly horizontal here, like that, snap it like that, then it would be perfectly tangent up there. But in this case, to make it more aerodynamic, let's make it a bit pointier. So press D to enter the dimension tool, click the point here, point here, move the mouse out to the side like this, and then I'm going to enter one. Finally, to close the sketch, we can click this dashed line here and flip it back to um, non-construction geometry by pressing Q. And we have this profile that's ready to revolve. All right, uh, I'm sorry, this is getting a little long, but we'll be done very soon, I promise. Now select the revolve tool. And for the, um, oh, I wonder, it looks like I might have accidentally clicked it twice. Okay, so never mind. let's delete that. All right, I should have, I, I was a bit greedy with my keyboard shortcuts and um, other things. So back to the sketch. Press the green check mark to accept the sketch. Um, now press revolve, and we're going to select this face to revolve. For the revolve axis, we're going to choose our center line up here, and we have this here. All right, so this is the shape that we want, but it's not quite what we want. So what I mean by that is you can see down here in the parts list, we only have one part. So we have the single merged part between um, this kind of blade that we made and the propeller over here. And the problem with that is that we can't really print something like this too easily that's hanging out in space. So what we're instead going to do is we're going to choose the new option, and we're going to have two parts now. So, or rather, there is also the surface here, but we don't really care too much about that. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a cutout for this in the 3D printed part. The way we're going to do that is go up here to Patterns, drop down, and then Circular Pattern. If you can't find it, you can just press Alt-C and type Circular, um, and Circular Pattern should come up. For entities to pattern, we'll choose the fan blade. For the axis of the pattern, we can choose the cylindrical face over here. And I think we're probably going to want three blades in this case. So go to instance count and set it to three. And now we have three blades. Perfect. All right, so we can accept that. And finally, we want to make sure that these are separate parts. So the way we'll do that is we'll go over to the Boolean thing, which looks like a Venn diagram. And then we'll choose the subtract option to subtract these blades away from the hub. So for tools, Make sure, so click on tools, then click on the three blades to select our tools, and now we'll click on targets and select the hub to select the center hub. To make it slot together nicely when we're 3D printing, we'll probably want to check off offset and offset all faces. So what you can see here is it's adding a clearance. And in general, when you're printing, you want your clearances to be a multiple of 0.4 millimeters, <clears throat> because that's what 3D printers typically have for their nozzle size. So I'm going to set this to be 0. Um, Let's even say 0 0.8 millimeters. Actually, you know what? That looks a little big, so I'm actually going to switch it to 0 0.4, so 0 0.4 millimeters. Oops, 0 0.4 millimeters, not inches. And then that will give us a bit of a cutout to work with um, when we actually have it printed so that it's possible to assemble it. Finally, I'm going to press Keep Tools so that we don't discard our um, blades that we use to make this. And then we can accept it. So it looks like we have this model ready now. We're going to have a bit of a gap where we can put it in glue or epoxy or something like that to actually assemble it. And for mounting it, we'll figure that out later. But this is kind of like a quick tutorial for how you can make this sort of aerodynamic part. Um, and for tapering and stuff, I'll probably make a follow-up video. Um, but rest assured, it's not going to be too different from this process. Um, I'm probably actually going to start with the same model and just show how to adop adapt it. And to make everything look pretty and nice and sort everything out, we can select all of our parts down here right click and add a material. Um, in this case, I'm going to choose ABS because that's a common 3D printing material. Accept. And now we can right click again, add an appearance, and I'm going to choose, let's say this nice purple color because we're at the University of Washington. We're Huskies. We need purple, be boundless Huskies. All right, so that's about it. Um, one thing that we can also do to make it easier to assemble is we can use um, a chamfer or a fillet on this edge. but. I think um, I'm going to make a follow-up tutorial for this that goes into a bit more of the advanced stuff uh, because this is already getting a little bit long. 
Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions at all, please like send me a message or email me or anything, and please give me any feedback you might have. All right, thanks. Um, hope this helped someone. That's about it. Bye-bye.